I'm going to move init displays under the start just to keep things in order. World buttons and level buttons get added to the displays array inside initialize items, but since we aren't using that function for HUD or results, instead we're going to use the init UI element function to instantiate them and then manually add them to the displays array inside the init displays function. There's already a canvas group attached to the HUD and results, so set the displays to to HUD Ducket component canvas group. Now add a case 2 to update displayed, and if control.currentGame doesn't equal null, then there's a game being played, and this is where we want to update the HUD. Else, we need to access game control to start a game. You might have to go to game control and make start game public before you can call start game and pass in the level index. Now we can select a world, select a level, and doing so creates a game and displays the HUD. We updated world buttons and level buttons from inside the UI manager, but we're going to make a separate function for HUD and results. Find HUD in UI prefabs, add component and type in HUD manager to create a new script. Then open it up and create text, score text, and high score text. Make sure to right click text and resolve the error as always. Make another text named level text and game object named projectiles display. In the start function, score text is equal to transform.findchildscore and get component text. High score text is a child of score text, so to initialize it, access score text, transform, find child high score, and then get component text. Level text is transform.findchildlevel, get component text, and projectiles display is transform.findchildprojectiles.gameobject. Make a public void update HUD that we're going to call from the UI manager. It takes in an int score, int high score, int level, and int num projectiles. Inside, set score text, text to score backslash n to go to the next line, and then score dot to string. If high score is greater than zero, we want that to be displayed as well. So do that the same way as score. Uh, and I left high score lowercase so that it's smaller than score. So level text, dot text is equal to level plus level dot to string. Before it'll actually do anything, the update HUD script needs to be called from inside UI Manager. So in update display under case 2, add if control dot current game dot game over and leave that empty for now. Else, access HUD Manager by getting the component from the HUD game object and pass in the current score of the current level, the high score of the current level, the level index plus 1, and the num projectiles in the current game. Now press play and everything should be working smoothly except that killing birds doesn't increase the score. Inside target damage is where the bird dies. So add a game control variable and initialize it by finding object of type game control. We're going to access the current level score through the game control and increment it in the kill function. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make each bird give 8,000 points. There's one final thing that needs to be displayed on the HUD, and that's remaining projectiles. Inside the HUD manager, make a void update projectiles that takes in an int count. Call this function from inside update HUD and pass in num projectiles. Update projectiles needs an int cur displayed set equal to the child count of the projectiles display. If the number of projectiles isn't equal to the number that are currently displayed, check if count is less than cur displayed or if it's greater than cur displayed. If it's less, there's too many displayed, and if it's greater, then there aren't enough. If it's less, run through a for loop where int i is equal to the amount currently displayed, i is greater than the actual count of projectiles, and i minus minus. Inside, destroy the projectiles displayed child at i minus 1. If it's greater, we need to instantiate more, and we're going to use the init UI element function inside the UI manager to do this. So go to the UI manager and set the function to public, then create a UI manager object inside HUD manager. Set it to find objects of type UI manager. Create a public game object named projectile prefab, then go down to update projectiles and use the init UI element function along with projectile prefab and projectile display transform to instantiate game object temp. Store its rec transform and use it to set inset and size from parent edge. We're going to do the left edge first. The left inset is the width times i, and the width is 50. Ignore the error, we still need to put all of this inside a for loop. 
set inset and size from parent edge again for the top edge with a top inset of 0 and a height of 50. Make a for loop where int i is equal to projectile count, i is less than the amount currently displayed, and i++. Find the HUD prefab in Unity and drag projectile sprite into the projectile prefab slot. I made a mistake on the second for loop. i is supposed to be equal to cur displayed and less than count. The next problem is that the game is automatically resetting itself when it's a game over, but we want it to go to the results display instead. Inside UI Manager, find the case 2 inside of Update Displayed. Inside the Game Over check, increment current display by 1. Now when Game Over is true, it should go to the next display, which is currently nothing because we need to implement the results. Go to Init Displays, and behind the HUD, initialize results. Then manually add results as the final item in Displays. Play again, and when you trigger Game Over, the results display should appear. Find the results prefab in your assets. Add a script named results. Open it up and let's set some variables. Text level cleared text is where it will display level cleared or level failed. Text score text and high score text. Button reset back and next. Game object stars, which holds all three stars, and game object failed, which is the sprite that appears when the level is failed. Now I'm going to initialize everything in the start function by finding the components within the results prefab hierarchy. Remember how we dynamically set up the button on click function in the init UI element script? Well, we're going to do that manually for the three buttons in the results display. Once everything is set up in start, make a public void update results that takes a UI manager as a parameter. Go into UI manager and make a public game object control with a git accessor that returns the private control. Back inside update results, make a level cur level set equal to manager.control.cur level. If manager.control current game num projectiles is greater than zero, then the player beat the level and still has projectiles left over. We're going to increment cur level.current score by the number of projectiles times 10k. We have a defeated variable inside of the levels class, but we need to add another bool current defeated that will return true if the current score is greater than or equal to one star, and false otherwise. Now in update results, check if the current level was defeated. If that's the case, we'll set level cleared text to level cleared. Then add a check to see if manager.levelindex is equal to the number of levels minus one, meaning that it was the last level that was defeated. In that case, Set level cleared text to world defeated and make next.interactable false. Set score text to score plus current level dot current score. Then if current level's high score is less than the current score, set high score text to new high score and update the cur level dot high score to equal the current score. Else, if cur level dot high score is greater than or equal to the current score, just set the high score text to best plus cur level dot high score. Inside the else at the bottom of update results, set level cleared text to level failed, score and high score to empty strings, disable stars, and enable the failed game object. Then in the front of the current defeated check, set stars to active and failed to disabled. There's a tiny spelling mistake inside start. Change button panel to buttons panel for each button. Jump back over to UI Manager and add a case 3 to the switch statement in update displayed. The way this works is case 2 will check if the game is over and then increment current display, switching the display to results. Results will then see if control.currentGame does not equal null, meaning the current display was just switched from the HUD, and if that's the case, then access the results script and call update results, passing in the UI manager. This gives the results all the information it needs to display, so then we'll destroy the current game's game object and set the value to null.
Since UI Manager has taken over control of destroying the current game game object, we need to make sure that game control won't be destroying it anymore, so remove the destroy current game from game control. Test the results display out and everything except the stars and buttons should be functioning. The stars each have an animation attached and the animation lasts about 0.4 seconds. We want them to animate in order instead of all at once. To do this, I'm going to make an IE numerator named show stars. It's going to take in an int index, which is the position of each star in the children of the stars game object. It's going to wait for index times 0.4 seconds and then set the star at the index position to active. Make a for loop that loops through the stars and if cur level dot cur star score is greater than i, start coroutine show star and pass in i as the index. Then access the star at position i and set it to disabled so that by default the stars aren't visible. The animations for the stars should now appear and animate properly. Now we're going to add some stuff to the clicked function inside UI Manager. Add an else if current display is equal to 3, then add if checks for each of the three buttons by checking b.name. If it's the back button, decrement the current display by 1. If it's the next button, increment the level index and set the current display to 2, which is the levels display. Else if it's the reset button that was pressed, don't change the level index and just decrement the current display so that it'll go back to a new game. When the player defeats a level, the next level should be unlocked. In update results, get the level at level index plus 1 and unlock it. Then set the next button dot interactable to true. Then at the bottom, if the level was failed but it hasn't been defeated before, we want the next button to not be interactable. For this tutorial, I'm only working with one actual level, but ideally you would make different prefabs for every single level. So the script is trying to access a level other than the first, and that's giving us an error. To fix this, just set the size of the level prefabs to the number of worlds times the number of levels, which is 60, and make sure that level 0 is in each slot. Since we're getting technical, start game should also take in an int world. If the world is equal to 1, we're going to be accessing levels between 20 and 39, so increment level by 20. If the world is equal to 2, we'll be accessing levels 40 through 59, so increment the level by 40. Then pass world index into the start game call within the update displayed function in UI Manager. Going to test everything out again, I'm noticing that the current score isn't being reset to zero, so if you replay a level, the score will just keep going up. In the end of update results, set the cur level dot current score equal to zero. Now the high score text isn't disappearing. This is because we're setting it, but not clearing it if the high score is zero. So in the update HUD function, say else high score text dot text is equal to an empty string. Now I'll make it so that if the backspace key is pressed, the current display will go back one. In the next video, I'll go over using player press to save and load, but otherwise that's it for all the displays.